pass it on, pass it on. Don't let your stories end. Pass it on, pass it on. From parents to children, from friend to friend. Tell me a story, tell me a tale of a bird in the sky or a ship under sail. With my imagination in my mind's eye, I see every little thing. In the story you tell me, pass it on, pass it on. With the story I'll regale, pass it on, pass it on. Come gather round and listen to a roundabout tale. Come gather round and listen to a roundabout tale. Grandpa, I'm here. Hi, Saigon. Hi. Grandpa, where are you? Brittany? Is that you? Uh, I'll be right out. Okay. How'd the report go? Great. Thanks for helping me out. Ah, uh, it was my pleasure. Dear? Oh, she's a beaut. I bet uh, your class had never seen the likes of a 100% genuine pirate spyglass before, had they? <laughs> they loved it. Mm. But, Grandpa, what makes you think it really was owned by a pirate? I mean, how do you know for sure? I know it's real because I took it off the pirate myself. Come on, Grandpa. There haven't been pirates around here for hundreds of years. Oh, no, it's true. There are pirates all over. You best be careful out there. Sure they are. No, it's true, I tell you. Didn't I ever tell you the story of Captain Phineas T. Blarney and his trusty parrot, Foggy? Nope. Oh. Hmm. He was one of the most feared pirates that ever sailed the bay. <laughs> Grandpa, this isn't another one of your really long stories, is it? No, tis true. Tis the tale of how one morning Captain Blarney awoke on the shore to find <laughs> that someone had stolen his wallet, his hook, and most importantly, his ship. Me. Somebody stole me ship. The last thing you want to do is make a pirate angry. I'll find my ship. Well, my name isn't Captain Phineas T. Blarney, the meanest man ever to wear an eye patch. Oh, they stole that too. Good thing I always carry a spare. So, what happens? Does Captain Blarney find a ship? I thought you don't believe in pirates. Come on, Grandpa, what happens? Oh, you don't want to listen to another one of my long stories now, do you? I have a few minutes before I need to go home. Well, well, finding a pirate ship that's lost isn't an easy thing to do. So, Captain Blarney decided to go to the one part of town where he felt he'd find a lot of ships the city harbor. I may not have a ship, but I have an idea. There's a two-masted schooner right over there. Ha <laughs> ha! I think I'll make her mine. Excuse me, Captain. I'm Phineas T. Blarney, Captain of the Willy T. And I want to come aboard your ship. All right, well, come on aboard, put this on, sit down, be quiet. We get underway in five minutes. Oh, that's it? That's all? That's it, that's all. Sit down over there, please stay out of the way. Boy, when you lose your ship, you lose all the respect of everyone. OK, stand by to get underway. I can't believe I'm a passenger on this ship. Oh well, 
I'll figure something out. Captain Phineas T. Blarney, welcome Blarney, aboard like ship. Purple. Welcome aboard ship. Where's the game? feel like I've been Shanghai. On my ship, my crew would be doing this. Excuse me, Captain. I was wondering as I look about, have you seen any pirates? Well, you're a pirate, ain't you? Well, yes, that's true. But I mean, you know, any other pirate, you know, somebody stole me ship and I'm trying to find it. Uh, I haven't seen any other pirates I kept, but uh, I'll be glad to give you a hand fighting your ship if you like. Hey, yeah, uh, this is quite a beautiful ship. What's her name? It's called the Lady Marilyn. The Lady Marilyn. What kind of a ship is she? Lady Marilyn is a pungi schooner. Pungi schooners were pretty common on Chesapeake Bay in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Carrying cargo up and down the bay. Cargo? You mean like treasure? Well, uh, no treasure. Mostly, you know, crabs and watermelons, that sort of thing. Well, you know, she seems to handle very well. Do you mind if I give it a go? Oh, sure. Help yourself. I don't see that it could do any harm. Well, thanks for the stirring boat of confidence. All right. She's handling real well. Tell me first, mate, Tim, this lady Marilyn is quite a pungy. But tell me about your rigging. I'd like to know more about it. What have you got? Well, we've got a schooner rig, which means it's got two masts. We've got a jib, a foresail, and a mainsail back over here. And a uh, pretty simple rig. Tell me about those masts. What are they made of? Douglas fir. It's a type of wood that comes from the west coast. Have you happened to seen my ship, the Willie T? No, no, can't say I have. Oh, well, too bad. We'll find my ship. Which way is it? It's over there! It's over there! All around the Chesapeake Bay, from the west to the eastern shore, under sail in fair weather or gale, from Norfolk to Baltimore. She is a pungy schooner, two tall masts has she, for oysters, fish, and cargo, she'll sail the Chesapeake. Captain, you've been a real gentleman of the sea. Thank you so much, but I still haven't found me ship. Well, the only thing I can think of is maybe try the Coast Guard. They deal a lot with lost boats, and maybe they maybe they found it, so call the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard. I'll give it a shot. Thank you. Yeah, good luck with it. All right. So Captain Blarney was soon pointed in the direction of the Coast Guard yard. Maybe they could help him find his ship. Hmm. What in tarnation are these? They're boys. They're what? They're aids navigation. It's what we put out into the water to mark the channels for the safe water for boating. What are they doing here? Why aren't they in the water? Well, this is where we bring them to clean them up, and then we paint them, and then this is where we take them to put them out into the water. Hmm, do you think there's any chance, you know, from one old salt to another, that I could join you on your ship and come along? I think we could work that out. Captain Phineas T. Blarney, with permission to board your ship. Welcome aboard, Red Birch. Thank you very much, Captain. Uh, <clears throat> I was wondering if I might have a private word with you. It seems uh, that uh, I have misplaced my pirate ship, and uh, I was wondering if you might be able to help me find it. Well, we have a lot of work to do this morning, but uh, while we're out working, we'll keep an eye out for your ship. Well, it's my neighborly of you. Thank you. This is the bridge. Yeah, it looks like an interesting spot. It's got a lot of stuff here. Can we maybe find my ship here? Sure. If your ship is afloat... Afloat? We'll be able to use the radar. The radar? What does that do? The radar has an antenna on the mast that will send out an electronic signal mm -hmm. that will bounce off your ship, and it'll give us a picture here that we can look at to help find it. A picture? Can I look at a picture? Sure, go ahead. Blimey, let's see what we've got here. Oh, it's all sorts of lights, but I don't see any ship, alas. Well, if your ship is sunk... Sunk? 
Well, it's a possibility. If your ship is sunk, we can look for it with the depth finder to help find it on the bottom. Bottom? The depth finder tells us how much water there is beneath the keel of the ship. Blimey, it's all fancy, all this equipment you've got here, but let me ask you a question, Captain. We're up here on the bridge and I don't see any wheel. How do you drive your ship? Well, that's right, we don't have a wheel. We have a joystick or a tiller. Tiller? Which is right here on the console. And the mm -hmm. helmsman will use this and uh, just move the stick to the left to turn to port. Right. And move the stick to the right to turn to starboard. So all you need to drive this ship is turn on the engines and use the tiller and we're out. That's right. Well, I think that sounds like a fine idea. What do you say we take her out and find my ship? Okay. <laughs> This is quite a ship you've got here, Captain. Tell me, uh, what is the mission of the Red Birch? Red Birch is a buoy tender. What is her overall size? The ship is 157 feet long, stem to stern, stem being the bow, the stern being the after section of the ship. Is my Willy T. Oh, where, oh, where can she be? Blimey, it's an orange sea monster and it's coming up on board! Why, back off, you blaggard, or I'll run you right through with my sword. I'm not afraid of you. Help! Calm down, calm down, Captain Blarney. It's not a sea monster. It's not? No, it's a crew member of Redbird. She's trying out one of our immersion suits. An immersion suit? What's that? We use that if we had to abandon ship. It helps you stay afloat and stay alive in cold water. You're wearing a shorter version of it. Yes, I am. This is also, this is called a life jacket. This would be worn in the summer months when it's a little warmer out. Blimey, you people have thought of everything when it comes to safety. You even got a safety ring here for my good parrot Foggy to make sure he's kept safe because whenever you're on ship, remember, safety first. Uh, do you mind if I leave? The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter is the guardian of the sea. She's sleek and fast on her white bow. Those red slash stripes will be upholding all the maritime laws is not our only chore. We protect every waterway from shore to shore. All hands and feet on deck. It's a fine day for a sail. If only I had a ship. Oh, well, Captain, you've been a real gentleman of the sea. Thank you for letting me tour Red Birch. You're welcome. One more thing, though. Are you sure there's no way we could have missed me ship? No, I I'm sure. But if it's sunk, you're going to need a submarine to find it. Do you hear that, Foggy? A submarine. <laughs> my pirate ship sunk. Captain Blarney searched the harbor to find a submarine. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Say, this is quite a ship. I've never seen a ship like this before. I'm Captain Phineas T. Blarney, and I'm gonna board this ship. Hello, hello, come on, open up. I ain't got all day. Captain. Captain, we've got a pirate up here who says he lost his ship. You've got a what? I think you'd better come up here right away, sir. Uh, maybe I better. On my way. Aha! A torpedo! <laughs> oh, can I help you? Yes, sir. I don't need any help. I see what happened here. What do you think I am? Blind? I'm only off blind. You sunk me ship with one of these torpedoes. Why don't you own up to it, huh? Well, was it a sailing ship? Yes, it was. It was the finest oh. ship of the realm. Whew. Well, I, I'm sorry, this torpedo couldn't even find your ship because it has to listen for the sound of your engines and you didn't even have any. Well, uh, that might be true. Uh, no, wait a minute, you're telling me that this torpedo couldn't have sunk my ship? No way. Well, how does a torpedo like this work then? Well, it's got a little motor in the back end. Do you know what a motor is? A motor? Yes. No, is that somewhere from Morocco? It's. 
It makes the propeller spin. The what? The propeller. See the little bronze thing in yeah, there? Oh, the bronze thing, yes. yes we had bronze turns, in my time. That turns, turns and spins. And, and it makes the torpedo move through the water. It pushes it forward. That's it? right. But how does it work? I mean, what, what gives it, it the power? It's got batteries in it. Batteries? Le electric batteries. So in other words, the electrical batteries powered the motor that spun the propeller that moved this torpedo forward. Is that it? That's right. And it w went out of one of these tubes here. See, see these? These are torpedo tubes. Torpedo tubes? That's right. You put the torpedo in the tube. Right. You shut the door on this end. Uh -huh. You open the door on the other end. Right. And out she goes. In the torpedo goes to the tube. Out she goes and she sinks the enemy ship. Absolutely correct. Righto. Good job. I tell you, Med, this is quite a ship, this Torsk. What else can you show me? What does this do? Now, you better be careful, because you're in the control room of a submarine. A submarine. That's what I've been trying to get to the bottom to. You keep calling this ship a submarine. I took Latin in ship sailing school. Submarine. Under the water. That's How right. does this ship keep going up and down in the water? In my day, when a ship went under the water, it stayed there. To go down under the water, you let water come into these big tanks that are on the outside, and the ship gets very heavy, and she goes down. All right, so she goes under the water when she adds the weight. But That's how do right. you get rid of the weight of the water to go back up? You just blow the water out of the tanks with compressed air. So tell me, how deep does this ship go under the sea? It can go four or five hundred feet. Four or five hundred feet? You mean the ocean's that deep? Prepare to dive. Let's go up and check the conning tower. Foggy, watch your head. So, this is the conning tower, is it? That's right, Captain. But I'm feeling a bit conned because I thought you were going to take me to a room where we could be underwater and I could still look for my ship. Oh, yes. Well, you can do that. Use this periscope. The periscope, where's that? You're holding on to it. This is the periscope. That's what do I do? That's the periscope. Do? You look in hmm. the little hole there. Yes. And you can see... Blimey! I can see above the surface. That doesn't look like a pirate ship. It looks like a bloody building. How deep can we be under the surface of the ocean and still use this periscope? You can be 65 feet under the water and still see out. Very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Down periscope. Fire one. I like this submarine. I'm thinking maybe I'll make it my own. Oh dear. Yo ho ho and a bottle of milk. Yo ho ho and a half and half. Deep beneath the ocean waves dives the submarine. She is the sleekest vessel that you've ever seen. With her handy periscope, you can see above the sea. And with her quick torpedoes, she'll sink the enemy. Well, it's all been quite fascinating there, Medford, but I've got to get on. I've got to find me ship. Thanks for all your help. I wish you the best, and I hope you find her, because I know she's out there somewhere. I hope I do, too. I must let people know I've lost my ship. I'll post a public notice. Oh, uh, yes, here's a good tree. Here's a good spot right here. Then they can go and know that they found my ship. Yes. Wait a minute, Grandpa. Are you telling me after all that, he never even finds his ship? Well, he did everything that he could, but uh, sad to say, uh, it just didn't work out. I can't believe you made me listen to that whole thing for nothing. What's the point? The point is that Captain Blarney went on a search for his ship, but he found a little something more important along the way. Knowledge. He learned all about the other vessels in the harbor. Who cares? What good is a pirate without a pirate ship? It's getting late, Grandpa. I really have to go. Uh oh, I guess you don't want to hear how the story ends, hmm? There's more? 
Aye. Well, Foggy, we best be looking for a new line of work. Let's see here. Short order cook. Now. Certified public accountant. Now. What's a waste management engineer? Hmm. It wasn't long before the poor captain's fortunes changed. Well, I'll be. What do we have here? Could it be? That's right. Captain Phineas T. Blarney had accidentally discovered the lost treasure of the Chesapeake. <laughs> so, tis true, Captain Blarney never really did find his lost pirate ship. But he used the treasure to buy a new one, right? Well, uh, not exactly. What do you mean? <sighs> Come with me. Do you believe in pirates? Ahoy, sea dogs! Prepare to be boarded! Ahoy, sea dogs! Prepare to be boarded! A pirate feared on the salty sea, a long red coat had he, with Foggy, his old parrot, and his ship, the Willie T. The meanest man to sail the waves with a black patch or one eye, a skull and crossbones is his fly, whipping in the wind on high. And it's yo ho ho, sing a song or tell a tale. With Phineas T. Blarney, we'll all set the sail. All around the Chesapeake Bay, from the west to the eastern shore, under sail in fair weather or gale, from Norfolk to Baltimore. She is a pungy schooner, two tall masts has she. For oysters, fish, and cargo, she'll sail the Chesapeake. And it's yo ho ho, sing a song or tell a tale. With Phineas T. Blarney, we'll all set the sail. The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter is the guardian of the sea. She's sleek and fast on her white bow, those red slash stripes will be. Upholding all the maritime laws is not our only chore. We protect every waterway from shore to shore. And it's yo ho ho, sing a song or tell a tale. With Phineas T. Blarney, we'll all set the sail. Deep beneath the ocean waves dives the submarine. She is the sleekest vessel that you've ever seen. With her handy periscope, you can see above the sea. And with her quick torpedoes, she'll sink the enemy. And it's yo ho ho, sing a song or tell a tale. With Phineas T. Blarney, we'll all set the sail. And it's yo ho ho, sing a song or tell a tale. With Phineas T. Blarney, we'll all set the sail. All hands on deck! <laughs>